let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and cheer him on real quick. Jonathan, bro. Jonathan. Well, uh, hey, hey, man, uh, thank you so much for uh, the, the cheers, uh, the warm welcome. I really appreciate it. Uh, I just want to uh, really quick just mention what an incredible uh, good news uh, network that was, episode two, just all the hard work that was put into it. Uh, my favorite part of watching the GNN was watching Luke on the Zoom call here. Like as it was going, you can see him smiling and vibing to everything that was going on. You could just see the joy from it. I thought that was really awesome. Uh, and then just Jordan, great contro, very uh, important just to get to the heart. But really, I just want to lift up Julie. I, I just thought that communion was incredible. Um, just, just imagining what you guys are going through. I am just extremely proud of you, uh, of the woman that you are, just for sharing your heart like that. Thank you so much. Uh, let's get into uh, Matthew chapter 26, and we'll get into... Uh, our, our sermon here. I'm uh, very excited to preach to you this morning. I hope this makes sense. Um, you know, we're going to get this done uh, as fast as possible. I'm talking 20 minutes or so, uh, and then get you guys about your day. Uh, Matthew 26. Uh, of course, we're going to pick it up starting here in the Last Supper. And then we're, obviously, Jesus is preparing for this Last Supper, and we're going to pick it up in uh, verse 20. It says, uh, when evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the 12. And while they were eating, he said, truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. They, uh, they were very sad and began to say to him one after the other, surely you don't mean me, Lord. Jesus replied, the one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The son of man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays, who betrays the son of man. It will be better for him if he had not been born. Then Judas, the one who, who would betray him, said, surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. Jesus answered, you have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and, uh, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body. Uh, the title of my lesson this morning is A Seat at the Table. Um, you see, we have this situation where Jesus has his 12 disciples. He's feeding them. He knows what's about to happen. He, he is going to the cross. He is about to be uh, beaten, tortured, mocked, and then killed. He knows what's going to happen. Now, I think what's very powerful about this is actually Judas' story. Is Judas' life and what happened, what led up to this moment. What Judas' heart was like. But I think also seeing what Jesus' heart is like. See, Jesus saw Judas. He knew it was going to happen, and he still fed him. He still walked with him. He still poured into him. He still gave his life to him. He still gave his heart to the man who would send him to be, but to be tortured and killed. That's a great example. Now, just a side note to that, you know, how, how, how many of us, when someone doesn't answer our phone calls, when someone doesn't talk to us, we're like, you know what, forget that person. I don't want to talk to that person anymore. When someone cuts us off on the road, we want to get angry. When someone starts, you know, dating or whatever, we get, we get jealous, we get envious, and then we don't want to be friends anymore, right? All these, like, these minuscule problems. But you see, you can learn from the example of Jesus here. You see, Jesus' heart was, you know, I'm still going to pour into this guy. I'm still going to give him heart. I'm still going to feed him. I'm still going to love him. Uh, let's look in uh, 2 Peter uh, chapter 1, and we're going to play a quick video here. 2 Peter chapter 1. Kobe taught us to be better. Don't cheat me. Push it, push it. Push it. Wake up every single day to get better today than you were yesterday. Whatever it takes. Better dreamer. Better waker. Better stretcher. Better walker. Better talker. Better walk and walk and talk and the talk. Better blocker. Better sprinter. Better loser. Better winner. Just be better. Do the simple stuff right. Better form. Focus, better friend, better fighter, better rider, better eater, mm -hmm. better leader, better generation, better nation. Just be better. Can you do that? Let's go. Back at it. Better player, better shooter, better score, better goat. Yep, better goat, better mentor, mm -hmm. better minor, major, mover, shaker, better skater, better artist. Yeah, better. 
teacher, better preacher, better believer, better first, better future, better hero, again, better hero, better mother, yeah, better father, better father, better father, better father, better father, better me, better you, better us. Mamba out. Better. Fam. Awesome. Uh, thanks, bro. Now, such a such a powerful commercial. You know, of course, uh, uh, sadly, uh, we lost uh, Kobe Bryant back in January or January 26th. Uh, it, it was a very tough time because obviously for me, you know, Kobe was to me and, you know, you guys can argue me and I would say this before. Kobe to me is the goat. You know, you can tell me whoever you want. I'm not going to believe you and I'm not going to agree with you. However, you know, losing Kobe Bryant was very hard. And the reason why was because of the situation, right? His, his daughter, like all, all these different things. It was very challenging, right? Now, when you look at this commercial and you, you listen to it, the theme is be better. Uh, point number one is a heart to be better, a, a heart to change. Uh, let's look in Second Peter in verse one. And we're going to pick it up. I mean, Second Peter chapter one, verse three, excuse me. It says, his divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises um, uh, so that through them, so through them, you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. For this uh, very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge and to knowledge self-control and to self-control perseverance and to perseverance godliness and to godliness mutual affection and to mutual affection love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, you see, if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But whoever does not have them is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. You see, as a, as a Christian, as a disciple, it is important for us to always increase, for us to always grow, for us to always be better. You see, we gotta have that heart to say, you know what, I am not comfortable. I am not okay with who I am. I want to change. I want to be better in this area. You see, sometimes as we are Christians for a long time, or as we, when we, in our, in our, even in our walks in life, we get uh, comfortable. We don't want to change. And we don't, and then we just, we're just stuck. You see, we, can, we cannot be comfortable in, in not changing. We need to be better. You see, you also have to believe that. Like, do you believe you can be better? Do you believe you can grow? Do you, or do you think that you're just going to be that way for the rest of your life? Like, this is just who I am. You know, I, I don't like it when people just, uh, when I talk to people and I meet them and I say, oh, it's just who I am. This is how God made me. And I'm just like, no. Y yeah, but no. <laughs> you can be better. You can be better in every single area in your life. You know, do you believe that? You, know, you have to want to be better. You have to want to change. Um, it's interesting. You know, when I watch this commercial, every time I see it, I get chills, right? We, we, to be a better father, a better mother, a better believer, a better preacher, a, a better sister, a better brother, like to be better in every single aspect of your life. Imagine if we all had that heart. Imagine if we all had the heart to just be better in every aspect of our life. Imagine that. What would we look like? But isn't that biblical? Isn't that what we just read? That if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, like, isn't that what we're supposed to do as Christians? You see, I, I, wanted, I want you guys to think about this. If you're the same last month, today, something's wrong. If you're the same a year ago, today, something's wrong. If you were baptized and you didn't change, something is wrong. You see, you should always be growing. Why? Because that is the fundamental uh, aspect of Christianity is to grow, is to be closer to God. Now, this is an area of my life that I, I have really had to come to grips with, right? That I just can't sit here and not read my Bible every day. I just can't sit here and just not pray. Like, what is wrong with me? How am I still struggling with that area in my life? Like something is wrong. You see, you have to take that and you need to be better no matter what. Now, here, here's the reality. 
And I'm going to break this down for you. You know, Peter was a prideful guy. Peter was prideful. John, the apostle, was a little unloving and unmerciful. Uh, uh, Paul was a persecutor, a great church persecutor, where he literally writes and, and says this in Acts 26, that he was obsessed, that he would even go to foreign cities to hunt the Christians down. He, that, that was his life. And then Judas was greedy. When Jesus was pouring, uh, when Mary was pouring the, the perfume on Jesus' feet, you know, he, he said, hey, like this money could be used for the poor, but that wasn't for the poor. That was so he could help himself. He was greedy. Now, what's the difference with all these people? Peter humbled himself. Peter also disowned Jesus three times, and then he became bold, and it was noted in Acts chapter 4 about his boldness. And, of course, church history is strong that he died a martyr not, not for, and did not disown Jesus again. John the Apostle goes to write about love. And then, you know, John was, you know, he was one of those guys, him and his brother, who wanted a seat at the right and left hand of Jesus. A little selfish, ambitious, right? But then you see him talk about this in, in 1 John, that, hey, like, love one another. And what kind of love is it that you should lay your life down for your brother? You see the change in these two people. And look at Paul. The great church persecutor became the great church planter. That's crazy. That's it. That, it, it, the change, the change that all three of these men went through. But what was the issue with Judas? He didn't change. He, he, he didn't have a heart to be better. He didn't have a heart to change. It was too late for him. And he didn't make it. And here's the reality. All these disciples betrayed Jesus. They all left them. They all abandoned them. They all fell away. They, they, they all missed the mark. Right? Like they, when Jesus died, they were like, oh, man, let's go back to fishing. And they were scattered. You know, I do have a special heart for fallaways. It, it, to my shame, you know, I, 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 I preach about this, but I have fallen away three times. You know, but I, I did learn a lot. And what I've learned is this. There is never a reason to fall away. It is inexcusable. If you are struggling this morning, if you are rocking back and forth, it is not an excuse. There is no reason to leave Jesus. No person should ever make you leave your God. Okay, sorry about that. Um, okay, amen. So you, you, you see that for us as Christians, we need to get back to understand that we can be better. You see, we cannot be comfortable and being weak. There's never excuse to fall away. You know, but I do love, uh, I, I do love a fall away who does come back to God. That, that, that is amazing. You know, our, our church is built on fall aways, the first century church. All these guys fell away and a persecutor. <laughs> like that, that, so even if you fall away, understand you can do great things for God. You can do great things. You know, uh, let's look in. Um, actually, I'll just quote this. In Luke chapter 9, it says, When Jesus had called the 12 together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Judas was there. Judas was present. Judas had the same power. Judas had the power to call, to, to call out demons, to cure diseases, to heal the sick. He didn't change. You see, you see that the getting into that trap of not changing is becoming like Judas. Is that if you do, if you are unwilling to change, if you are unwilling to be better, like that, that, that is where that, that comes from. Because we should always be better. We should always be growing. There is no such thing as I'm just like this all the time because it's who I am. That is a lie from Satan. You can change. I think Julie said it perfectly uh, in her communion, that through the power of God, that, that is the, God's power is made, per, made perfect in weakness. It's about being in a relationship with God. You know, today as disciples, we have the spirit. We have the power. You know, God has given us this amazing power, this amazing power to move forward. The question is, what are you going to do with it? How are you going to use it? We understand the fruits of the spirit. We cannot just sit in just all this sin, we, we have to be better in our lives. We have to move forward. You know, I think what's important to understand is this. It's not about what you think is better. It's about what God says is better. It's about what the Bible says is better. You see, your better and God's better are two different betters. You can be God's better if you go after it. Um, you know, the Bible says, of course, that Satan prowls around like a roaring lion uh, looking for someone to devour. And he devoured Judas. And, and understand this, Satan is waiting for you. 
It takes one slip up. It takes one moment of weakness. It doesn't take a year to build up. Sometimes it does, but it can take one moment. One moment, one opportunity, and then it's over. Satan just in you. You have to be careful on your guard and rooted into your God to fight off those demons. We are in a spiritual battle and you need to recognize that. You see, but if you're not growing, if you're not being better, how can you grow in any other area? You see, these areas, all they all coincide. You know, when you go through hardships, you persevere, right? Like they, 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 they work together. You have to go through it. You know, one of the traps I think we fall into, and I've, I've fallen into this myself, is the trap of saying this, I'm doing good. I'm okay. Yeah, things are great. When, when, and you know things are not great. And here's the thing, I've been here. Because either we don't want to be open, either we're prideful, either whatever you're going through, you're just like, boom, like, I'm good. And then, you know, you know what happens when you don't share what's going on? You get stuck. Your, your heart gets hard, right? Like, you're just, and you're in this moment of just, just torment. And then things just get worse and worse and worse. If you notice, you know, uh, I'm pretty vulnerable and open with my life. You know, I'm not, I've not always been like this. You can ask my mom. She, I believe she's on the Zoom call right now. Um, you, you, can, you can literally ask my mom. Like, I was angry. I didn't talk about my feelings, and then I would just explode, right? And so you got to understand this, is that when you don't share what's going on, you, you, that, that's what happened. You're eventually going to explode, or you're going to shut down and just be quiet. So there's a reason why I'm vulnerable. There's a reason why I share, I, I share as much as I can. Now, hey, man. That, that even recently, I had a, a weak moment where uh, I was talking to Luke and I was like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> so it does happen from time to time. And, you know, you have to, Luke knows me well enough to say, yeah, bro, yeah, what's going on? <laughs> so, hey, amen. Uh, you know, have a great relationship with your discipler and then uh, things will be awesome. Uh, let's look in Acts chapter two. You know, Judas's life is a huge example, example of what can happen to us. We need to evolve. We need to always be evolving, no matter where we're at, where we're at in our lives. You're a Bible talk leader, evolve. You want to lead a Bible talk, evolve. Change the areas of your life so that you can be ready for that next step. You have to evolve. I think Jordan said it perfectly in the contribution. It's, 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 it's about the heart. Like that, that, that's the issue. If you have a great heart, you're going to do great things. If you have a bad heart, you won't do great things. You'll do bad things. You need a good heart. Acts chapter 2. Uh, point number two, uh, closing point here is um, a heart of flesh. And we understand uh, from Ezekiel 36, and God says, I will remove from you the heart, your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Now, in order for us to be better, in order for us to change, we need a heart of flesh. We need a soft heart. You see, a hard heart is stubborn and stiff-necked. They're not going to change. You need a soft heart to change. Why? Because you need to be pierced. And let's look at that in Acts chapter 2. Verse 36. Of course, this is the start of the church here. Peter stands up, as we talked about earlier, and he gets the church started. A very powerful sermon. And then he gets into verse 36. He says, therefore, uh, therefore, I let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucify, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the, and the other apostles, brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, the promises for you and your children, and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. Now this call is for you also. Now he, he, here is the reality. They were cut to the heart. You see, you need to be pierced. You need to be pierced in your heart to change. And if you were baptized and you, uh, you felt it, you remember that feeling of being cut when you realize that you're the responsible for the death of Jesus Christ. Are you still cut today? Are you still affected by that? You know, when I take communion, I, I, I did this thing that Luke does. Uh, he takes a cracker and he puts it to an ear and he, and he breaks it in half, right, in, in his ear. And I, I, he preached about that one time. I said, oh, let me try it. So I did it and I just got the chills because in my mind, I'm thinking about Jesus' body being broken. And I'm just like, wow, I did that. You see, we have to remember, we have to stay cut. And if your heart is hard, we got to deal with that because you're not being penetrated. You're not being pierced. We need our hearts to be cut. You know, um, uh, let's go to Philippians chapter four. We'll close out here. 
you know, uh, recently uh, we kept this pretty private for the most part. I know a few people know, um, but uh, in the be- at the end of August, I think like August 27th, I was admitted into the hospital. Okay, we'll close out here pretty quick here. But I, I, so I was admitted to the hospital at the end of August, right? And we kept this, like I said, pretty on the, on the down low. Now, basically what, uh, what happened, my chest was burning. Um, so I went to the, the urgent care. They said it's probably just acid reflux. And then I, but then it got worse, right? It was this constant burn. I just couldn't, couldn't get around it. And so I ended up going uh, to the hospital and then uh, they did an ultrasound and they said, it looks like I had a heart attack. And so I'm like, I I remember when they told me that I just started crying, you know, just weeping. I'm like, I'm 28 years old. How in the world am I having a heart attack? Right. And so then they admit me into the hospital. And so I stayed there for four days and they did all these tests on me, a lot of blood drawn. And then what ended up being happening, uh, what happened, I had to do this MRI. And then that what they said is that one, um, my troponin levels were elevated, uh, where it looked like I had a heart attack. So they're unsure. They don't think that I did, but it's, it's possible. Uh, now, basically what happened is my heart, uh, I have this thing called uh, myocarditis, which is basically inflammation of the heart muscle. And so uh, it, it just kind of rocked me a little bit. I was having a hard time, right? Because now it's like, uh, you know, there, there's issues. You know, I get out of breath. I can't move properly. Like all these different things are happening. And it's been a little scary. And then they tell me if I catch COVID, you know, uh, it could be a problem. Uh, but it, it was just very humbling. It, it, it was very hard to deal with. You know, I can't play basketball right now. I can't work out. I, I can't overexert myself. I'm on like four different medications, you know. And, and I remember when I was sitting here, I talked to Luke and, you know, we were talking about it. Uh, he called me while I was in the hospital. And I started crying again, you know. And I, I think what happened is, is I realized two things. What is, if I die right now, what will happen to my kids, my wife, you know, and I, I, I got to the point, okay, the, I know, I know Luke and Brandon and, you know, the church will take care of them. But then it was just a thought of not seeing my kids grow up. It was a thought of my wife having to do all that by herself. And then I had a second thought. What was my purpose if I die right now? What, what did I do? Right? Like, what purpose did I fulfill that now I'm gone? And I remember I was sitting there and I was talking to Luke about it. And we talked about how, man, you know what, Luke, like even being in this situation, my heart has grown soft, right? Like I, I could feel it. And it, it, it was very challenging for me. And it still kind of is. And I, but I remember I shut down for a little bit, you know, and, and things were, things were hard. And, you know, I, I was trying to fight through it, but even now, like I, I, I I'm up till 5 a.m. every day, every night almost because I'm just afraid of dying. And not so much I'm worried about where I will go or anything like that, but that I'm about leaving my family. I'm worried about not doing more. I feel like I've just begun. And it was challenging. It was very hard. It, it still is. You know, it's funny because I, I had this fear of dying. And I, I, was, I was like crying and emotional. And then Luke was like, you know, bro, you know, uh, I know you'll be okay. You know, I know that you'll pull through. And, and he goes, well, just in case, is there anything you want to confess? <laughs> and I was like, oh, my goodness. I was like, bro, you know, no, I'm good. <laughs> but it was very challenging. I was like, man, I don't want to wrestle with this. You know, it's very hard. You know, but it, it, it was very hard for me to do that. And I, I started to blame God a little bit. My heart, you see, my heart started to get a little hard, right? And then I stopped changing. But then I realized this. Most people who die from myocarditis, it is a sudden death. And they, they don't know that they have it. They keep playing basketball, sports, football. They still, they keep working out and then they just die suddenly. And so I had to realize that, you know what? God didn't afflict me with this. He saved my life because if I I was hitting the gym, you know, I was going five times a week at that point and, you know, losing weight, I've dropped 23 pounds. You know, I'm, I'm beating Luke in the race, which is awesome. You know, but at the, at the end of the day, there's, there's a, there's a, uh, there, the idea is that like, you know what? Like God saved my life because if I would have kept working out, I could have just suddenly passed and that could have been it. Let's close out again, like I said, in Philippians chapter four. We'll close out here. Uh, I, I, I am doing good. I feel good. You know, for those of you who are just finding out, you know, things are awesome. Um, I'm learning a lot, amen, trying to be better. Uh, verse 11, it says, uh, I am not saying this because I'm in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need. I know what it is to have plenty. I learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or at once. I can do all this through him 
who gives me strength. You see, you have to know what it feels. You have to be content in every situation. Something happens to you, you got to still love God. There is no excuse. You still need to be with your God and be content in everything that happens. You say, I'm still learning this. I think we have to learn this secret. And what's the secret? It's through God. God helps you get to that point. He gives you that strength. Do you believe that? I'm going to put before you this challenge here. I want to start a, a revolution of an evolution that we should be evolving in every aspect of our lives. So I want you to be open with this week. If you're studying the Bible, be open with what you're struggling with. If you're, if you're uh, struggling as a Christian, be open, be real. And let's start this evolution. Let, let's evolve together. And you can evolve because God gives you that strength. Let us have a heart to be better in everything that we do. Let us be better every day, be better Christians, better, uh, better fathers, better sons, better daughters, better mothers, better wives, better husbands, be better leaders, better followers. Let's be better in every aspect of our life and let us hold strong to our seat at the table and to God be all the glory.